It's 2035, and America's military has once again been sent over the horizon to deal with threats to the national interest. This particular campaign first requires the suppression of enemy air defenses, and the main concern there is surface-to-air missile sites. Although the air tasking order has fragged F-35s off of the USS Enterprise, a Ford-class aircraft carrier, the mission starts, unusually enough, with a couple of C-130s dropping pallets off of their ramps. As the pallets fall, the bundles strap to them break apart like a wasp's nest dropping out of a tree, and a swarm of small drones known as Speed Racers emerge. The Speed Racer drones hone on signals from their host F-35s loitering nearby, and the drones join up with the fighters like the disciplined, albeit unmanned, wingmen they are. As the F-35 pilots enter the hostile SAM envelopes, they transmit commands to the drones now under their control. Things like, collect data, and go forward and draw fire, or find this target. The drones see things the manned aircraft don't, and the fighter pilots use the real-time intel to redirect their anti-radiation missiles or adjust their ingress routes. Welcome to Project Carrera, a newly revealed effort from the legendary development cell responsible for black programs like the U-2 and the SR-71. Skunk Works has solved hard problems before, like how to create a reconnaissance platform that can fly over Russia without getting shot down by fighters that can go Mach 3, or how to build airplanes invisible to enemy radars. This time, their problem involves figuring out how fighter pilots can actually operate drones in the field, what the value is for humans in the loop, and how to establish trust between those humans and the artificial intelligence guiding the drones. Skunk Works VP John Clark recently told our friends at Breaking Defense, quote, This is not going to be a one-off stunt where, hey, look, we've connected an F-35 to this uncrewed system, and we passed a track, and yay, success. We now have a media headline that says we did a crude, uncrewed teaming thing. What we're really focusing on is a systematic buildup where we can evaluate that human and uncrewed system interaction and understand how those behaviors build up over time, end quote. The Speed Racer part of Project Carrera was revealed by Skunk Works in 2020, and the early flight tests of Carrera will focus on demonstrating Speed Racer's airworthiness, starting with captive carry tests. The company wouldn't say what airplane will carry the drones during these tests. Then Speed Racer will make its first flight, which will demonstrate whether it can be successfully launched from an aircraft. And after that, they'll ramp up to attempting tests where an F-35 controls one and then multiple Speed Racer drones. Speed Racer is slated to cost just shy of $2 million per copy and is currently designed to be expendable. And while it has a starring role in Project Carrera, Skunk Works also intends to use $20 million of their $100 million budget to demonstrate other air vehicles and classified payloads during these tests. And Skunk Works also wants this project to be more than just proving that fighter jets and drones can operate within the same airspace. As VP Clark told Breaking Defense, quote, If you're playing chess, you don't want to put all your pawns on the back row and leave the king and queen exposed on the front row. Just following fighters around is not an effective way to defeat a near-peer adversary. You really have to have the ability to push in front of the fighters to either stimulate the integrated air defenses of the adversary, or you have to be providing information that the onboard systems of a fighter can't organically get themselves." End quote. At the heart of Project Carrera is the idea of flexible autonomy, an AI brain for unmanned systems that can adapt to the needs and preferences of the user. In Skunk Works' early experiments with autonomous systems during the late 2000s, they automated everything. And basically, the mission would unfold, and the user would watch and not understand why things happened, and would wind up wishing other things had happened instead. As Clark summed it up, quote, There was no easy way for them to interject or drive what the warfighter thought should be happening with the set of autonomous systems, end quote. But flexible autonomy is supposed to solve that problem by allowing the user to decide how much control they have over the uncrewed system at any point of the mission. So pilots with years of experience and a high level of comfort in the cockpit of a fighter can direct every action of the drones under his or her command, while a more junior pilot can opt to take a more hands-off approach. But for all of its ambition and cutting-edge potential, Project Carrera is basically just a glorified proof of concept leading into the bigger goal, which is the U.S. Air Force's Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program. CCA is an assortment of uncrewed combat drones that will augment the F-35, F-22, and the upcoming sixth-generation fighter slated to be the centerpiece of the next-generation air dominance family of systems. The Secretary of the Air Force recently said that they plan on starting the competition for the collaborative combat aircraft as early as 2024. And speaking of next-generation air dominance, or NJAD as it's called, as we discussed during the episode on that subject, Americans aren't alone in pursuing manned and unmanned teaming capability. The Australian Air Force is already working with Boeing on a program called Loyal Wingman, where F-18s control as many as four to eight drones per Hornet. 
But Skunk Works' ambition is to do much more than that. John Clark said, quote, Candidly, as we watch the rest of the environment, this is an area that's not getting as much focus as it should. We've got a lot of folks that are emphasizing, hey, here's my pretty vehicle, end quote. And as we prepare for peer adversaries, the last thing we need is just another pretty vehicle. All right, that'll do it for this episode. If you're not already a subscriber, click the button and ring the bell so you don't miss anything. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please consider using the super thanks, the heart icon below, or become a patron at patreon.com slash wardcarroll. And in the meantime, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.